So I've been able to make it through a full video that has both a Johnson rifle and a Walther PP without making a phallus joke. Make sure you watch the end to find out. Welcome to the Millsurf Mike channel. Last year around this time I made a state of the channel video where I showed off some of my acquisitions for 2021 as well as went over some of my goals for both the channel and collecting for 2022. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing here, do a state of the channel, talk about some of my best acquisitions of 2022 as well as some of my goals for 2023. First off, I gotta say that 2022 was great for both my collection and for the channel. And when I say for the channel, I'm not talking about some of this growth that I've received the last four months from shorts. Although that is nice, but some of the best things about the channel were meeting some people that I've considered friends for years. Uh, I got to meet Crazy Scotsman and Allenby Pro, who I've considered friends through YouTube for years. Scotsman is a great guy who, uh, you know, whenever anybody needs something, he's willing to get a fundraiser. Most of the times, these fundraisers, he's putting up something very expensive that he owes. You know, he's a guy who'll give you the shirt off his back. One of the best guys in the community. You know, it's great to finally meet him. It's great to meet Allenby Pro. Allen's right up there with Scotsman. Allen has some cool stuff in his collection and it's just great to meet these guys. I was able to shoot some of the cool stuff they had. They were able to shoot some of the cool stuff I had. I was able to help make one of Scotsman's dreams come true, get a good Glock 19X in his hands. You know, he loves shooting it. You know, he's going to throw all his CZs away for now. In seriousness, great meeting them. I was able to do a couple collaborations this year. The Mosin Grand guy on Instagram, he's starting a new YouTube channel called The Mosin Man and his first video was a collaboration with me. So. His channel has nowhere to go but up after that. Very smart dude. He's very articulate. All the information's in his head. He has a quick repop call ability. No us, ums. Uh, I know somebody, a lot of people are making fun of me for saying basically too much in one of my shorts. I envy keeping that knowledge in his head because most of the time when I study for something, you know, it just out. I wish I would retain a lot of the stuff that he retained. Of course, I did quite a few shorts collaborations with Danny and Hopefully we're going to do a long video collaboration soon. The shorts kind of took over at the middle of the year when YouTube started pushing them really hard. It's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, I know YouTube's trying to get rid of TikTok, and TikTok is evil, even more evil than YouTube. I would like to see YouTube kick them out. I think YouTube's pushing the shorts at the detriment of long-form content, but the only way to grow is to do shorts. i actually kind of been lucky on shorts that it's fueled some of the growth of my channel. It's also taken away some of the time and energy that I would have put into long form videos and it's probably taken away from possibly doing a collaboration with Danny as well. When you're out there, you know, you only have so much daylight hours. He has kids, I have kids, you know, it's just hard to find time to get out there. I'm not going to complain about the growth I got from shorts, uh, talking a little bit about the channel. I hope it doesn't take away from the long form. I have a Henry 1860 video coming up that I have like 30 or 40 hours into already. And I'm scared that, you know, even with nearly 15,000 subscribers, that I'm only going to get 200 views on it. Hope it translates over. Otherwise, uh, collecting some of my goals for 2022 were to, uh, you know, work on the CZ pistols and work on a history for that. You know, so that was both a collecting goal and a channel goal. I did a bunch of Czechoslovakian history. I still got to kind of finish that out. Have the pistols that I need to finish it out. I actually need to find a pre-B magazine for CZ-75 before I get into making that video. Plus, you know, I wanted to spread it out a little bit more. And I also got into Yugo history a little bit too. So I have two series that I kind of need to finish out this year from last year. Uh, one of my major collecting goals for 2022 I was able to achieve that in February, actually, is I wanted an unscrub Polish Mauser. Now, many Polish Mausers have made it through the Spanish Civil War, and they got scrubbed, so there's no markings on the uh, receivers, and I wanted some that still had markings on the receivers. I took my first YouTube paycheck ever in February, and went in Rock Island Auction, and put in and bid, and won a lot of K98WZ, as well as a uh, WZ29. And they were both FB Radom. So this one is the WZ-29. So this is actually the later rifle made in 1939. Beautiful rifle. Uh, this was, to me, this was the prize out of the lot. I was very happy to get it. When I made that video, I don't have the other rifle. Actually, I traded that off at Missouri Valley Collector Show. And I'll get into that here in a little bit. But the reason I did that was when I made the video 
talking about getting these rifles. I forget whether it was on Facebook or on YouTube. Somebody let me know about the uh, a rifle for sale in upstate New York. I said I wanted something with a Warsaw on the receiver because what I had was FB Radom. And the guy let me know that there was a gun store slash deli slash marina slash convenience store in upstate New York that had one with the Warsaw on the on the receiver, but it was missing the stacking rod. I called them up. They still had the rifle. I said, okay, uh, let me see if I can't find the stacking rod first. So I looked all over Gun Broker, Proxy Bid, you know, eBay. And it was on eBay, the only one I could find in the world was in Eastern Ukraine. Now the guy, this is right after Russia invaded, the guy acknowledged that, you know, what was happening to his country, but he said, you know, he'd still send them out and, you know, try to get them out to us, you know, we ordered, ordered from him. So I figured if it didn't get to me, I was only out 69 bucks, you know, not much skin off my nose. But if I got it and the rifle was sold, you know, I still have a part that, you know, I could sell here in the U.S. Luckily, I got it, and the guy got it to me within three weeks. So I was impressed, you know, that, I, you know, he was on, like, you know, the bad side of Ukraine, and it still got to me within three weeks. So I called up, the rifle was still there, got the rifle, got it to my FFL, and the only thing that was missing was a screw in this barrel band. So I actually got that within the last couple weeks. So I, I actually only have about $800 into this rifle. And it's something I could probably sell for $1,600. So I'm actually glad glad that I was able to kind of put this together. And even though you know, I have no idea about the rifle story itself, I still I think I have a pretty cool story about putting it together. Now I said that I traded off the original uh, K98AZ at the Missouri Valley Show. And what I traded that toward was this Type 2 Air Socket Paratrooper Rifle. Now, there weren't very many of these made at all, and there's not very many in this country. So I'm very happy to have this. You know, it's pretty cool. It comes apart, and you know, nice, it can make a nice backpack hunting gun, you know, if you can find the 7.7 .7 ammo. The Missouri Valley Collector Show is a show that I look forward to going to every year, and I actually joined that club because most of the people in that club are like Joe Biden age and this is one of the best military gun shows in the country we are very fortunate to have it here I'm very fortunate to have it within 10 miles of my house so we need to get some younger blood in there so if you're in the KC area join this club so we can keep keep this you know excellent gun show in Kansas City for years to come something else I got at that gun show well first before I talk about that I actually bought this at a gun store in town, this Colt 1903 Pocket Hammer in 38 uh, ACP, and it, also, it came with a box of ammo, which is pretty cool. And I already had almost another full box of ammo. This is kind of stupidity on my part, so you can make fun of me for this. I thought I had a Colt 1902 in the safe. I bought it many years ago, and I hadn't looked at it since really. But you know, it's in the safe, and this is before I kind of knew what I was looking at. But I got it for a real good price back then. I decided to get it out to compare, and well, lo and behold, it was actually a Colt 1903 pocket hammer, so I had two of them. Luckily, I was able to trade one of those, the one that I already had, I traded that at the, the uh, Missouri Valley Show for this Colt 1902. It's pretty cool, I was able to you know, add these to my Colt Early Autos collection. I have a 1903 pocket hammer list as well, as well as the 1908 vest pocket, the little teeny tiny gun, and of course my vintage Colt 1911. All my social medias, I think that's my avatar, is my 1911. Another great show that I look forward to every year is a small military show in Leavenworth. And the way my days off landed this year, I was actually able to get there very early. Actually, I arrived before it opened, but I was still able to get in and look around. So I picked this up first thing, this uh, K98. It's a Norwegian conversion. Norway kept some of the best K98s that were left there after uh, you know, Germany left after the war. Then they converted them in the uh, 1950s after the United States gave away 30 out 6 on candy. So they converted this to 30 out 6. And I talked a little bit about this in a couple shorts, as well as, uh, you know, talked about it in the uh, Leavenworth video that I made. And the cool thing about this was I actually took a doe with this this year at my parents' land. Now, usually when I take my, uh, when I go with deer hunting, I get a couple of deer every year. You know, I just take out my old FUD. Remington 700, 30-06 with a 4x12 scope on it. I haven't 
I've never taken a deer with a uh, mill syrup until this year, and this is what I took it with. So I really like this gun. Yeah, I mean, not only is it a cool gun, you know, within 30 out six, but I've actually taken a deer with it. Something else I got from that show, and the uh, subject of you know several phallic jokes. You know, you want to see my PP? Is this Walther PP? I got this on the last day. This is pr likely a very late war. Um, as the American GIs occupied the Walther factory, former slave labor there would put it together. So, uh, you know, the GIs would have souvenirs and, you know, the GIs would feed them and clothe them and stuff. So, this, you know, is mismatching on the slide and the frame, and there's no proof marks on it. So, you know, usually that's an indication of that. And as well, it's got the, uh, you know, original holster with it. You know, this is a late war, you know, barely paper thin holster but you know this is authentic to go with this so that was a you know that was a very good show and it's a show I look forward to every year the biggest and best thing I got this year I got it from Joel at Panzerfaust Armory this Johnson M41 Johnson rifle so uh, you know kind of kind of girthy around there around the handguard uh, you know, fills up the hand Joel and Panzerfaust Armory, he's local to me. Well, he's on the opposite end of the city for me, but still local to me. It's only a 50 or 60 mile drive. But if you're a Milser collector, you know, Panzerfaust Armory should be something in your rotation that you look through, you know, every day or every week, or at least be on his mailing list. I got, um, you know, I traded two M1 carbines, a K90AK, a VIS 35, and some cash for this. So, you know, while this did improve my collection, it also made my collection a little lighter at the time. You know, this is kind of the, this is actually kind of the pride and joy of my collection right now. It's a collection that I hope to continue to improve in 2023. Now I'm gonna say like a couple stretch goals, which is every year. I still wanna get a G41, I have a G43. I probably won't be able to start a German uh, series until I get a G41 because I kind of want to be able to go through the whole thing. I also kind of want to get an AR-180 at some point. But two things that I plan on getting at some point this year, it, it's not even mill syrup, it's more replicas, is I'd like to get a Brown Bess and I'd like to get a Charleville because I'd like to do an American History series at some point. And having a flintlock, a smoothbore, is kind of the only thing that's really stopping me from doing an American History series. So those are my two main goals, the Charleville and Brown Best. And plus I'd like to be able to, I like to try shooting a flint lock, you know. I want to see if they're as inaccurate as ever history's made them out to be. Uh, for the channel, I'd like to kind of keep on keeping on. I'd like to do some more collaborations, you know, hopefully do a long form collaboration with Millsurp World. And, you know, maybe hopefully uh, do a collaboration with a couple of bigger channels. Hopefully put out good content, hopefully keep improving. Uh, that was something I worked on this year as well, was to improve the content to make it more watchable for you. If you want to see what my goals were for this year, make sure you click over here. Also, tell me anything that you got cool this year. Let me know in the comments below and let me know what your favorite thing that I showed you here was in the comments below. Get $5 off your membership at the GOA the description below. Thank you for watching and as always, have a great day.